Khatum and Ramadan Mubarak. I'd like to take just a few minutes to cause us to reflect. When the Quran is talking about this month of Ramadan, saying that this month in the Quran, Surah Al Baqarah, the 183rd ayah, says that, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, O you who believe. And this profession, anyone can say that they believe. Many people say, oh, I think that God is good. I think that helping people is, an, is important. I think charity is the right thing to do. But the Quran always follows this phrase of the affirmation of one's belief by some action. You will find it over and over in the Quran. When Allah talks about faith, it's followed by action. Inna ladina amanu. So in the month of Ramadan, we have this introduction, Ya ayyuhaladina amanu, kutiba alaykum as Fasting has been prescribed for you. It's been ordained for you. It is a prescription that the Almighty has written for you as that prescription was written for people before you. So you will not find any people, any religion in the world in which people have not had an institution of fasting, whether they're Christians, whether they're Jews, Protestants, Catholics, whether they're Hindus, Jains, Zoroastrian, Buddhists, all of them will have some form of fasting. So if this is such an important uh, device that people can use, a tool that people can employ, what is the objective? And the Quran's Reminder to us that the objective is in the Arabic language, wa alakum tatakun, that you would acquire taqwa. Now, somebody might say, Well, what is taqwa? To have fear of Allah. I like to think of taqwa as something different. I think of fear as hauf, the Arabic word hauf, where I have a feeling of, Oh my God, that's, I, I shouldn't do that because I know that Allah is watching me. But taqwa is a kind, my teacher Muhammad al Hanuti says, is a connection between you and Allah. It is a connection that reminds you when you do something that the Almighty is aware of what you're doing and you are striving in what you do to try to please that one, to keep the relationship of love and mercy united. And so the idea of acquiring taqwa through the institution of fasting so that I can use that connection to be an action of faith that says I believe in the Almighty because I'm going to do what I was asked to do to refrain from the feeding of my passions of feeding my desires of being so outward now to be more inward and with that sense of consciousness then to say what is it that I could do? What is it that I should do? How can I be of service to the Almighty by restraining myself from the feeding of my passions? People are passionate about many things. They have a passion for their drink, for their food, for their lusts in life. But to take time to bridle myself, to say to my body, that it is my soul and my mind that are responsible and that it is my body that is acting out those desires rather than having my mind and soul be driven by the hunger of my body, the hunger of my desires, that I want to be a leader, a self-leader, that I lead myself given this connection, that I lead myself toward those things that are right. If we could use this 29 or 30 days, psychologists say that it takes about 23 days to create a habit. If we use the month of Ramadan to create a habit, the habit of looking for guidance, the habit of being together, of praying together, of fasting together, of standing in the night and joining with one another, if we could in a month sacrifice and feed the needy among us or to be sensitive to those who are less fortunate than ourselves if we could come out of this month with 
the habit of doing those deeds, then we would have in fact acquired the objective of Ramadan. That this injunction, Kutiba alaykum as that we have been ordered to fast so that we would acquire taqwa. Wa'alakum tattakum. Wa'alakum tattakum. Wa'alakum tattakum. Inshallah, may Allah accept it from